All right, good afternoon, everybody. So I am Ari Lehmusvori from uh, Hydex, Finland, and I will tell you about our extraction chromatography instrument. Uh, so Hydex have been uh, manufacturing and selling liquid scintillation counters for about 26 years. And now for the past two years, we have also manufactured uh, sample preparation instruments. So we have two instruments. One is 600 OX oxidizer, which burns samples and collects gases in liquid scintillation vials uh, ready for, for counting. And the oxidizer is mainly used with C14 and tritium samples and can be also used with a few other radionuclides, uh, for example, with chlorine. But today I will tell you about the QR100+, Plus, which is the automated uh, extraction chromatography instrument. But first, one slide about samples. So the, the idea of uh, high-deck sample preparation is that you can have any type of sample so you can have liquid sample or solid sample, you can have the tissue, soil, plants, or even concrete. And after the sample preparation, uh, you should have homogeneous liquid sample ready for, for liquid scintillation counting. And this is extremely important because with, with good sample preparation, you will get accurate results from the counting. But with, with uh, no or bad sample preparation, you might get incorrect results. So the QR stands for Quick Automated Radionuclid Extraction, and we are talking about extraction chromatography. So al although you are experts, here is a short uh, update of that one. So the extraction chromatography is based on columns of one to several milliliters. And the col columns contains the resin, which are made of uh, inert support material uh, that contains uh, extractants impregnated on the surface of the support, and that makes the stationary phase. Uh, so the sample moves uh, in mobile phase and goes through the resin, uh, and then the target radionuclide is uh, catched by the extractants. Here is one example of the strontium catched by the organic molecule when there is a, a strong nitric acid, and then it can be eluted with water or milled acid. And typically in extraction chromatography, you have the four steps. First is a conditioning, when you use a strong acid to activate the resin. Then in the second step, you add a sample, and when the sample floats uh, through the column, the, the target radionuclide is uh, catched by the resin. Then usually have a one washing step. It can be again strong acid. And then at the final step, you have the elution, which is often milled acid or water. And then you get your chromatogram if you follow the sample. And it often looks like this. So you, you see the different compounds as a peaks. And then you want to collect uh, your target radionuclide. And traditionally, nowadays, it the, the, these are mainly done by, by manual methods so with the gravity method here shown on the left or then with the vacuum box showed on the right side. So the vacuum box makes the flow uh, faster and, and it might also make it more stable. Uh, so here's a picture of our automated instrument. So it's a tabletop instrument that weighs about 60 kilograms. Uh, here is the main features of the instrument. So you can load up to eight samples into one run. So it will process eight samples simultaneously. And the samples are, are uh, loaded in the 50 milliliter bottles. And if you have higher sample volume, uh, these, the tubings can be replaced with longer tubing and then you can put the tubings uh, let's say to any any kind of container if you want to pull a uh, liter or liters of samples into the system. Uh, we have one pump for each sample, so there's eight pumps, and then we have also the eight columns. Uh, each pump is uh, calibrated individually to have accurate pumping volume. Then we have a 12 reagent solution. So there is six plus six bottles. And there is a, a, a two reasons why there is six and six bottles. 
so here on the left side, there's a six bottles that are connected to these four columns. So, the, so it's a columns uh, and samples number one, two, three, and four. And then we have another set of six bottles which are connected to the samples and the columns from five to eight. So in this way, you can run two different protocols at the same time, or you can run uh, so-called tandem chromatography. So I, I will tell you later a little bit more about the tandem, how it works. Uh, then we have total of 20 elution fraction uh, collection bottles. So from the four columns here, one to four, you can collect two fractions from each column. So total eight. And then from these four columns, so columns five to eight, you can collect three fractions, which is 12, and it makes total of, of 20 elution fractions. Uh, then the system has uh, acid resistant and fume hood free design. Uh, so all the pieces that are uh, connected with the samples and with acids, so pumps, valves, tubing and fittings, they are made either from PEAK or PTFE, and those are resistant to, to acids. Then there is a doors that covers the pumps and columns, uh, so it's also a safety feature in case of any leakage, the user will be safe. And then also this is uh, this is not a high pressure instrument, so we could call it the low pressure instrument. So in any case, there will be no spray of strong acids, which is uh, extremely important because we are dealing with with uh, extremely strong acids. So how the system works? So it's basically a liquid handling instrument. So in the middle here, there's a pump, and under the pump, there is a column. So the pump pulls liquids uh, from the reagent bottles or from the sample bottles, and then the liquids flows through of the, if, of the uh, one tubing, first to the pump and then to the column, and after column, uh, you can choose if the liquid goes to the waste or elusive bottles. So there is a from from columns one to four, there is two elusive bottles, E1, E2, and from columns five to eight, there is uh, three elusive bottles. And here you can see all the liquid lines in the QR instrument. Uh, so there is eight pumps and total of 50 valves. And here we can also see how the tandem chromatography works. So for example, if we start from sample number one, so the liquid starts running through the pump number one and through the column number one. And here we can choose in tandem chromatography the port here and the tubing here that connects column number one to column number five. So the same sample will throw, flow uh, through column one and column five and after five, either the waste or some of the elusive bottles. Then if the next step is, is a wash step, you can either choose one of the reagents here, let's say region number two, again, it goes through uh, column number one and we can direct the liquid to column number five. Or you can use a different set of reagents to do the washing step of the column number five. And same in the elution, especially in the elution, you need uh, different lines so that you then you can automatically collect two different uh, elution fractions from different columns. So you do elution of column number five with these reagents and then elution of column number one with another set of reagents. Uh, then about the software, so this is the basic view of the software, what you see when you start building your protocol. So after when you have uh, built your protocol once, you can of course save it and use it later on. But here you can see that you can uh, make maximum of 10 steps in the one protocol. And in this stage, you can choose if you run your protocol with all eight lines for eight samples or you can choose left and right so in the left you have four 
pumps and four columns and on the right another four so you can run the same protocol with all pumps or two different protocols. And when you start building your protocol, first you choose process name. So again, it's the conditioning, loading, washing and loosen. Uh, then the reagent from bottles one to six. Then the mounted position, which actually means the, the destination of the liquid. So where the liquid will end up. So it's either waste or elusion bottle one, two or three. Then important thing, the flow rate. Typically one or two milliliters per minute, but you can also run uh, with very high, very, very high flows up to 15 milliliters per minute. Then the total volume of the step. All right, and that that is actually how you you set up the protocol, and the software is ex extremely easy to use. And the applications, uh, I would say that you can use the instrument with all applications that you are using manually. So you can have Triscam uh, uh, resins, columns and cartridges, or you can use your, your in-house or self-packed columns. Uh, and at the moment, we have two different models. So we have the QR100 Plus with the capacity of, of running eight samples simultaneously. And then we have the QR50, which has the capacity of four sample processing at the same time. So it has the half of the capacity with four pumps and, and four sample lines and four columns. Otherwise, the, the QR50 is uh, it has the same physical size as the QR100 plus. So with, with automated sample preparation, you, you get improved user safety uh, because it reduces the worker exposure to, to activity, radioactive sample and also to uh, strong acids. Uh, then you have improved re reliability because the instrument repeats the same thing again and again and again, so there is no, no human error. Then higher throughput, so you can also run the system overnight and then you will have your sample ready on the morning. In some cases, you might get shorter analysis time, but this really depends on the chemistry. So if the chemistry allows you to run the liquids faster, you can do it, but I, I guess that in most of the cases you need to have a low flow of one or two mils per minute, so then, then the, the time is same as in manual processing. And at the end, the lower overall costs, uh, because you can run more sample with less man hours or with same man hours, because you can also run, uh, for example, the overnight. <clears throat> 